Good to see you. How are you? you? Thank you for that introduction. I may have a few scars to prove that point that you made as well. Um, glad to join you all this afternoon. Um, you will notice the scenic background that I have set up on my uh, Zoom account. Uh, this is Lake Jericho in the White Mountains and uh, hope that you all can find some way to uh, get out and enjoy the beauty of New Hampshire. Um, perhaps this weekend, I think the weather is gonna be warm and nice. Uh, this happens to be a fall scene, but there's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, I do want to uh, actually just make one point uh, relative to uh, Dr. Fahey's introduction, because um, he introduced uh, the topic of homeschooling. And I actually prefer the term home education, uh, not homeschool, um, because in home education, the goal is a little bit different. Uh, we are not trying to recreate uh, in the home environment school, but actually try and find an alternative home base for educating children. Um, and what is really uh, interesting is that, well, I think that this, this distinction is very important, first of all, um, but I would also say that the laws of New Hampshire reflect this as well. We don't have a home schooling law, we have a home education law. Um, and we refer to this as an alternative education option for our students. Um, I will briefly just touch on the laws. I know we want to talk about kind of the framework and, and I'm happy to talk about any topics if there are questions relative to home education, um, you know, including my own experiences, but I want to reflect it about the, um, my, in my role as commissioner. Um, New Hampshire has very effective home education laws. Um, it is a relatively straightforward process for parents uh, to engage this process. They um, need to begin by filing an intent to home educate uh, their children. Um, that can be filed with a local school district. It can be filed with a um, private school uh, who would act as the custodian for them, or it can actually be filed directly with the commissioner of education for the state of New Hampshire. So it's not infrequent that when a family decides that they want to home educate in New Hampshire, that they send a letter to me indicating their intent. Um, the information on that intent to home educate is relatively simple and straightforward. Uh, the date when you intend to begin home educating, the name and address of the student who is being home educated and the date of birth and the name of the parents and a phone number where we can reach you if something urgent comes up. Um, I often remind people that uh, the intent, filing the intent to home educate is the easy part. Um, and then you actually have to engage in the process of home educating your child, which is a, uh, a much more daunting task um, and requires a lot of work. And it is the hard part, um, but anyone who has been involved in home education knows that it is irreplaceably rewarding as well. Um, and that's easy for me to say because I'm at the back end of my uh, seven children and have only one child left in the home education system um, at this point in time, a, uh, a sophomore in high school. I think she's a sophomore. I should know the answer to that. Um, and so while our home, our home education law is good, um, it does, it provides a lot of flexibility for families um, with regard to sequencing and timing of the content of instruction, but it doesn't include, it does include um, some broad content categories that need to be included. Um, and these are the kinds of things that I think most people would find um, they're interested in, you know, educating their students and their children about, you know, in sciences, math, language arts, government, history, um, important subjects and important um, formative uh, pieces of information that will help their students and, and anybody's students well into the future. Um, we do have an accountability system relative to home education here in the state of New Hampshire um, and understand that that accountability is built around the concept of uh, the broader education laws, which include compulsory education laws um, that require that students between the ages of six and 18 attend school. And so a home education program is a, um, an, a qualified education program that meets the requirements of compulsory education. Um, but that in accountability includes um, some various options uh, for folks to use that meet the needs of their children and their families best. Could be a portfolio review, um, which can take place by an educator or a 
um, an educator who is well certified in the public system or even an educator who's not certified but is working in another qualified private education institution. Uh, they, a student could take an assessment um, or a student really can do what's referred to as any other agreed measure. So if someone has an accountability measure that they think would make, make sense for their family, um, they again can reach out to the commissioner's office um, and we can agree on some type of an accountability measure that is really designed around the concept of your child making progress in their education, which is I think a shared um, value both for, I know this commissioner of education as well as for the parents who are involved in that home education program. Um, irrespective of the, um, you know, those accountability measures that are in place, those are not, um, you know, a basis for discontinuing a home education program. Um, and it's interesting that how, uh, you know, this, these laws have, we, we had some other laws in the past and those laws have changed. And so that's kind of the basic schema that we have here in New Hampshire. Um, and I think that it serves our families. I think it serves our students um, and it serves our communities very well. Um, it was interesting uh, when in this role, if there are issues that come up around home education, and quite frankly, we don't have a lot of them, um, but they generally tend to center around that intent to home educate. And it may be that the agency that is receiving that intent to home educate. So um, if a, a family is filing an intent to home educate with a local school district, it may be that the local school district is unfamiliar with the laws and what those requirements are. Um, and so they may ask the family to provide information that is beyond the scope of our law. So for example, they may say, well, it's all good and well that you're going to be home educating your students, but we need to know what are the curricular materials that you will be using and how will you be doing the instruction and how many hours a day will you be working on uh, that instruction when in fact those are not requirements under the New Hampshire law. And so, um, you know, with a quick conversation, we can uh, familiarize everyone uh, you know, with what the requirements and the law say, um, and we can begin to move forward and because that information would not be required. Um, I know that today's conversation is really centered in response uh, to um, Ms. Bartholet's article in, in the Harvard Review and some of the assertions that she made. Um, and I guess, I, you know, just I wanted to reflect briefly on that. And then I know we've got other panelists coming in and they're going to and then we can do some questions. Um, but, you know, it is widely known that home educated students are a wonderful advertisement for more home education. Um, having, uh, you know, raised some and met many, many hundreds, probably thousands over the years, um, I think they are a, um, a testament to the effectiveness of home education. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are not some, uh, you know, areas of improvement that can happen and that it's not all perfect all the time. But I think generally speaking, that's a good generalization. Um, I want to just focus on a couple of the, the criticisms that were brought up in uh, Ms. Bartholet's article. Um, one is the question of how do we know they're learning? Um, you know, and in, and in particular, um, you know, how do we know they're making the kind of progress that we would expect from them? And I think that this is a question that we should not ask and limit ourselves to only the home education environment, but should consider that question broadly across all education systems. Um, how do we know that our students in our public education system are learning? How do we know that our students in a, maybe a private setting or a home education setting are learning? Um, and because we know that particularly with home education students that they regularly outperform their peers across a whole number of measures. Um, so if in fact we wanna point that question of how do we know they're learning? Uh, we ought to, you know, if a, as a public education system should first be reflective um, relative to the students that are in their care as well. Um, I think as well, people might, um, you know, there's a concern that people who are home educating may not be that educated themselves. And again, this is the criticism of Ms. Bartholet. Um, and I think it really just uh, reemphasizes her lack of understanding of home education. Uh, we know that across the board, again, that students who are in home education environments outperform their peers across a whole number of measures. But in fact, this point uh, struck a chord with me um, because in uh, you know, our traditional education system, 
Um, family income, as an example, is a strong predictor of academic achievement. We know regularly when we provide assessments for, to students in the school system that students who are economically disadvantaged perform you know, as much as 20 percentage points lower than other students on those same types of assessments, resulting in a great deal of inequity in that system. Um, and in home education, you don't have that disparity. Those equity um, opportunities are closed. And what we find is that family income is not a predictor of academic achievement. And I think that um, Ms. Bartholet might actually be um, impressed if she were to look at that. Um, and so then I guess the last thing that I just wanna uh, lean in on a, a little bit before turning this over to the other presenters here is, um, I'm not sure that Ms. Bartlett, when I was reading it, realizes um, the lack of tolerance that she exhibits when she herself uh, states that she's concerned that home educated students will lack tolerance of other people's viewpoints. Um, and I, it, it just seemed an irony to me that she would be saying that uh, towards folks whose views uh, she may not herself be tolerant of, um, particularly the viewpoints of families who come and choose uh, to home educate their own children. So I am happy to join um, with you all this afternoon. I'm happy to join with my co-panelists and look forward to uh, participating and responding to questions that you all may have. Thank you for inviting me.